welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 119. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James Cork. Hey, Norman. Hey, everybody. Hey, James. How are you doing, man? Uh, I'm okay. Good, good. Here, drawing some artwork uh, in my stream. We're live, for those of you who don't know. Uh, but that gets lost in the magic of editing and uploading on YouTube later. Yeah, we, we, what I'm looking here is very veiny. Uh, no, shut up. Nobody <laughs> needs to know about the giant. That's not a word. That I'm drawing. Oh, that's oh, that's not a word. Uh, but anywho, uh, Rom. What? That's not a word. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Rom, how you doing? Awesome, awesome. I am also performing art, struggling with the shading. Well, not struggling, but doing it slowly to make it perfect. Nothing explicit, I hope. Of course, no, no. I was doing that last night. Oh god. Today I'm doing safer work stuff. Oh boy, you should join we us when we stream. Uh, when we do this live, folks, it, it's all fun and uncensored. We swap the streams, right, Romu? <laughs> yep. Like uh, now, I am the one drawing R34, and you are the one drawing clean artwork. Yep. Oh, God. last night was vice versa. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh, last night we had Silver Quill on to review the comics, so that was awesome. Yeah, yeah, we we did. Yeah. You won't know until that of, uh, about that until later. Yep, and this will be dated. <laughs> uh, uh, we already dated this. Well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anywho, let, let's move on. Rom, your time. Da, da, Housekeeping. Da, da, da. <laughs> Housekeeping. Never free Northwest plug. Sponsor badges reopening. Limited spots available. Good news for the Ever Free Northwest attendees. We have reopened our sponsor badge tier and have a limited quantity of 13 sponsor badges now available. These badges at $350 give you exclusive access to priv and privileges. The special access includes a private pony stock musician meet and greet where you can mingle. <coughs> Mi mingle? Yes, mingle. I thought it was mangle. Mingle, mangle. No, mangle is when, you, yeah, mangle is when you take a sword and you cut somebody's head off and then oh, you do horrible. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Be careful with that. You can cause an international incident <laughs> with your stupidity. <laughs> In good grief, man. What is your problem? <laughs> Right. Mingle with the most talented musicians and artists in the fandom. First seat at an exclusive Pony Star concert with Tarby... Sh oh my goodness. Shrenzo? Shrenzo? <laughs> Aviators yeah. and Jeff Burgess. Mm -hmm. Preferred seating at panels. Three autograph vo vouchers. Vouchers. Boucher. One voucher. Yes, thank you. One voucher for a shirt of choice at the Sugar Cube Corner vendor booth. A limited number of patron badges are also still available for purchase as well. If you've already purchased your badge, don't worry, you can easily update by going through the registration process and selecting a sponsor badge. And you'll only be charged the difference. Upper tiers badges won't be sold at the door, and pre-registered ends on June 13th. So don't delay, get your sponsor badges now, and make the most of your ever-free Northwest experience. Yay. I am terrible with names. Indeed. I apologize if I misread someone's name. Mispronounced. Uh, indeed. That's my job. Anyway, next one. Ever Free Northwest 2014 Pony Stock and Music Track. This year's Pony Stock is sure to drop some sick beats with intense sound and fantastic lightning. These fantastic musicians will be rocking the house on the main stage on Friday starting at 7.30 p.m. on Saturday starting 8 p.m. We're also excited to announce a special guest performance by Rebecca... Shoiket. Shoiket. So shit. So, God damn. <clears throat> God what God is God. wrong with your pronunciation today, dude? I'm You're bad with names. <laughs> I'm very bad with names. Sure I shit. can see that. It's the VA okay. For, Don't worry. The voice actress for Sunset Shimmers and singing voice of Twilight on Friday night at 8 p.m. More information can be found in the show notes below. Indeed. Yay. So if you're attending Every Free North West and you already bought your tickets, don't worry. You can just upgrade your tickets. And get all those cool perks like preferred seating at a panel, three autograph. Wow, Auto autograph voucher costs about twenty bucks if you want to know. So, getting three vultures up front—that's awesome. And pony stock, yay! Who loves music? I love the music. You love the music too. I know that because you're listening to the end of the credits. And yay, Rebecca's on there too. So yay! Hope you go there, man. Hope you go there. Anywho. Move on to the next topic, and Rome, steal your time. Yay, my time to shine. News time. In today's news time, Tony Award winner Lena Hall uses friendship as magic to end her acceptance speech. 
During the end of Lennis Hall's acceptance speech, he thanked all of her friends and ended, by, ended it by using friendship as magic. And when asked about it in the press room, she confirmed it says that it's a good show that teaches the value of friendship. Overhelmed by support of the Brony community, she gave a shout-out to us all and asked what would her OC's name be. Links can be found in the show notes below. This is interesting. Uh, Lena Hall, I never heard of her before until this. And wow, the way she said it out during her acceptance speech was really awesome. It is really cool to have something like that happen every now and then. Uh, it, 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 I know it's kind of silly. It's an award ceremony, the same way with the Oscars. Personally, I don't care too much for the Tonys. Mm-hmm. But... Think about it. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a weird validation. <laughs> it, 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 it's like, haha! Look at that. They give us a shout out. We are not a bunch of creeps. We are actually socially acceptable. Uh, but that, that, that's cool. That's cool. Is like it feels nice to know. Hey, they can make reference to us without having to feel deeply ashamed of being part of uh, of liking something. Mm-hmm. That's so awesome. And the the, the way that everybody re- responded. Like, we have to make an OC of her. Oh, my God, she's so cool. Oh, my God, she's so great. And now she has her own OC. Yeah, now the name, someone needs to name her. I'm looking at the OC right now, and oh, my goodness, is she hot. <laughs> and uh, the best part of the whole thing is when in the press room, someone asks, uh, you ended the beach with Friendship is Magic. Is that a reference to My Little Pony? And she said, yes. And she watched the show, and she said, the value of friendship in there is really awesome. And she taught, And it taught her... A few things about friendship that she forgot. Like uh, apparently she watched it through Netflix, which oh, yeah. it's kind of curious. It's like wow, Plug. look at that. Netflix is actually cool. Yeah, Netflix I'll never cool. know. We don't have Netflix in Spain. Oh, same here. Same here. Have, same here. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I wish we have Netflix. I, I, I would want them to sponsor us so we can <laughs> do a plug for them. But no, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, yeah, you know what? You know what? Don't get Netflix. They don't have it. In, they don't. We don't have it in Spain, so that means it sucks. So, oh, okay. <laughs> no, Netflix. <laughs> if you're hearing this, we we love you. Please sponsor us. <laughs> we don't love you. We will love you when you get international. You useless bunch of beep 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 beep. Uh, never mind. Uh, anywho, if you open Netflix in Lithuania, we'll give you all our potatoes. <laughs> Uh, anywho, Rush, they might actually take on your offer. Be careful. <laughs> Why, it's a really you don't want potato. to face we a don't pota- You don't. You don't want to face a potato drought. Oh god! Don't worry, we'll grow some more. Yeah, <laughs> right. And then they will steal them. They will get rights for your potatoes. <laughs> Worth it. Anywho. So today in Potato Cast. <laughs> oh god. Anywho, next one, Rom. Exclusive Botcon Transformers comic cover featuring Soundwave and Vinyl Scratch. It looks like Soundwave and Vinyl Scratch will be joining the exclusive comic cover club. If you're attending BotCon, be sure to keep an eye out for Toy Fusion booth to keep, get your copy of the 30th issue of Transformers More Than Meets the Eye. Links can be found in the show notes below. I've seen the cover and it's awesome. Ooh. I really so want this. This is not an MLP cover. This is a Transformers uh, comic book. Yeah, I, I've seen it and it's for the 30th issue and it's at BotCon. And oh my god, have you seen the cover for this? I'm it's, looking at it right now. It's DJ Pone Tree and Soundwave. Um, DJ battling with the scratch tables, like oh god, so good. That is a really clever way of uh, promoting your other IP. Mm-hmm. And this yeah. begs to differ with the news that we mentioned last week about Megatron and um, Nightmare Moon. Uh, is it going to be a pony convention exclusive, or is it going to be a Transformer convention exclusive? Because the art style looks like this one, the vinyl and Soundwave one. I have no idea. I'm too excited. I'm speechless. My waifu! <laughs> Wait yeah. a minute, your waifu is vinyl? Yes, didn't I tell you that like several episodes ago? Did he say no. Pinkie Pie was your waifu? I no, thought your, yeah, yeah, I thought your waifu Octavia. was Pinkie. No, I mean, I like her. She's my favorite one of the, of the main six, but my waifus are Octavia and, and vinyl. And she I got a thing for music. You can only have one waifu. You That's not a word! Why not? Uh, you can have more than one. You are cheating on them. You're, you're upsetting them. In the Mormon religion, you can have two. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. Okay, vinyl it is. Since I'm more into electronic than classic. Oh, oh good grief. But Permission still. to continue? Traitor, you traitor. <laughs> but this is a good one. This is a good cover. I, if you're going to attend BotCon, do keep an eye out. Do keep an eye out. And Rom. Okie dokie. 
In other news, adorkable is a word. Recent Colin English Dictionary <laughs> did a poll, and adorkable was one of the words, and it won. Now, adorkable is an illegitimate word. Links can be found in the show notes below. Yay. So, remember, guys, when you're playing Scrabble and you're... And you have the word adorable, that's 10 point and you win. Yay! <laughs> uh, I thought it was like uh, that, uh, what, Cambridge adding no, new no. words to the World Dictionary? or No, it's not no? Cambridge. It's Collins. Collins. It's another dictionary place. Mm. Collins is probably one of the most veteran and oldest dictionaries in the planet. Mm-hmm. Okay? They are the. the they, they are kind of like the frame of reference of. Uh, people that are learning new languages. Mm. Uh, I remember having uh, Collins dictionaries when I was growing up. Over here we have Oxford, but yeah, we had Cambridge. <laughs> wow, we, I, we, we three... I remember perfectly. We have ca- we had Cambridge dictionaries back in our school. We three have different sets of dictionaries. That that's awesome. But um, other than that, like adorable is now a legitimate word. That that is cool. And the word first popped up in where James? Adorable. Yes. I have no idea, dude. Why are you asking the, me? I'm not a linguist. Um, the first, the word first appeared in the "Look Before You Sleep" episode. Ah. Oh, you're talking about? Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, in the show. In, yeah, the, in show? the show. Yeah, that's where I it don't think out. it's ever. No, it's never appeared. Um, it did. It this what the. Daily. Oh, sorry, I misread it. I'm just reading the article on the website. It says, Twilight Sparkle earned the term "adorable" via the "Look Before You Sleep" episode. I guess it may be sprung in the fandom. I'm I guessing. don't think so. Look before you sleep. Give me a second. Um... Go to the script uh, of Look Before You Sleep on the wiki, pe- on the wiki page of so uh, yeah, the MLP wiki Transcript. and see when it first appeared. It's not in Look Before You Sleep. It doesn't appear on that episode at all. Maybe not the word, or, but maybe that's where the it, term was born. Or it does, and I am totally forgetting because it's been a while since I last watched that episode. So, you know mm, what? Yeah. I'm not sure. No, I'm not sure. Transcript. I don't remember. I don't remember that because the term "dork" is kind of like back then. It was kind of offensive. Okay, no, um, it's not there. So, yeah, no, it's not right. It's yeah, not. It's, it's not there. But I think people call for a moment. Face... I thought I was going crazy. God damn! It. <laughs> Sorry, I misread the article. My apologies. No, 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 man. No. Yeah, I, I thought the same thing too. But no, um, it didn't. We the fandom created it, and you know what? It's a legit word because think about yeah. it. They are. They are girls who are really dorky, but they're cute at the same time. There like, are very guys mowing. that are super dorky, but they're also cute. This uh, is applied yeah. for both genders, guys. Yeah, it's yeah. Just... It's very mowing. So, yay. Definition of adorkable. A person or an object who is adorable and also lo- a dork or doing something that is geekish to make them adorable. <laughs> I don't uh, think an, o- an object can do something dorky. except. You well, know, it says a, here, a person a or an object. Yeah, this is the I don't, I don't see. I don't see an object being adorable. <laughs> Well, it could oh. be a robot, not a living person, an object. Well, you know what? That is true. In that case, Mecha is adorable. Yeah. And, and you are too, James. You are too right now, drawing. Yeah, I, I know. I'm an object too. Yeah, <laughs> You're actually a person, but hey. Uh, no, I'm a thin. I'm, I'm a thin. I'm uh, Spaniard. I I, I'm a Spaniard. I don't have a... I don't have a, a, a pers- a per- I'm not a person. Oh, uh, but you are to me. But anywho... Oh, look at that Spaniard. He thinks he's people. <laughs> uh, anywho, thank you, Rom. Thank, thank you for the news updates. I am Romy Alta, the MBS Show News. Back to you, Norman. Okie dokie loki. And let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is discussion time. In today's discussion time, we discuss what would we do when the show ends and how has it affected our lives. <laughs> oh, yes. good question. Th- this, this. Um, it's an interesting one because before this, you talk about something similar to this in your stream, right, James? Uh, well, let's let's see this from a pragmatic point of view, okay? Mm-hmm. Every TV show has to come to an end sooner or later. I mean, we all know what happened to Firefly. We all know mm-hmm. what happened to every single show made by Josh Whedon. They end up either canceling it or stretch, stretching it in, stretching it. Uh, so long that it loses all semblance of personality. Mm-hmm. After the vampire, for example, I think there has to be a middle point where a TV show has a run and then it ends, and that's it. Like for example, The Last Airbender. Avatar: The Last Airbender is a perfect example. They did three seasons of it, then they did the spin of Legend of Korra, but it ends right there. 
I hope that it's the same for Friendship is Magic. Mm. I because you can stretch a TV show long enough until it becomes a zombie. You know, you know what that means in terms of TV show. Um, yep. You remind us. Okay. The first season is always the season that starts everything. It introduces the characters, it has some basic stories, nothing spectacular, but it's kind of original because you are like, oh, new concept, new idea, that's cool, and then you get hooked into it. The second season is where they are taking more risks, where they are making other stuff different, where they're changing stuff, they're adding character traits, they are trying to get into storylines, and uh, whatever. The third, uh, from season three to season five, is where things get more mellow where they either change a lot and they they sweep the personality of the show or they don't change enough and they keep it all the same. And then after season six, it's just re, uh, retreats of the, of the previous episodes. Nothing new, nothing innovative. And then after that, after the sixth season, is when the show becomes a zombie where they just keep making the episodes out of pure obligation. The storylines make no sense. There is no investment from the writers or the animators or the producers or the or the actors. It's like they are doing it because they want to get a paycheck, and that's it. And that happens with a lot of TV shows. CSI comes to mind, actually. 24, most importantly, comes to mind, where they were... Actually, they were recycling... In 24, it's hilarious. They were recycling concepts in season 4, Oh my. Where uh, season, yeah, like I don't know if you remember, but in 24 you have season one, an assassination attempt, season two, nuclear threat, season three, a virus threat, and then in season four, nuclear threat again. Oh. Then in season five, assassination attempt again. Then in season six, nuclear threat. Then in season seven, and then it keeps going and going and going. And now they are making something like called 24 London, and I am like, why don't you just drop it? So that's that's the one problem is that that's how what happens when a TV show becomes a zombie. That's why I am like, you know what? If they end season, if they end My Little Pony: Friendship Is Magic on season five, I will be happy. Mm. I will be like, you know what? It had a perfect run. It had a lot of episodes. None of them are repeated. They are all different. They are all memorable for better or for worse. They have a lot of personality. That's it. Don't mm. don't keep going, and I will be satisfied. So you know what? When it ends, I will cheer up, I will drink for it, and I will just keep moving because mm. the end of the show doesn't mean the end of the fandom. Look at Firefly; they still have Firefly conventions. Josh Whedon goes to this, Nathan Fillion, and everybody else goes to these conventions, and the show has like thirteen episodes. Wow! Can you? I'm pretty sure that if Friendship is Magic only had 13 episodes, with the creativity that the show has, we would still be here. Like, mm-hmm. we wouldn't have these numbers, we wouldn't be so big and so extended, but we would be here. Mm-hmm. We, are a strong, we, we are a strong fan base. We, are, we can be annoying, we can be loud, we can be obnoxious, but we are, we are here. Mm, true that, true that. And Sorry, I, I think I just stepped on a soapbox. I am going to get down from there now. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> but you, other examples of zombie shows are like uh, Futurama. No, not Futurama, sorry. Uh, no, the Simpsons. Not, no. Yeah, the, yeah the Simpsons. The, oh, The Simpsons is the prototypical example. You yeah. want that zombie show? The Simpsons is. Yeah, and Family Guy. and Family Guy. Uh, and uh, even uh, uh, South Park. Hell. South Park, yes. South They're Park just knocking South pop culture references now. Yeah, I mean, Soft Park, um, the reason why Soft Park is like that is because it's easy to make. They finish an episode within the week. That's the thing. With... South Park is a very original, very imaginative, very funny TV show. But mm-hmm. when, you, when you think about it, it has a very predictable formula. Mm-hmm. In that I, I actually watched like three or four seasons in a row because it's very easy to watch. It, it's very watchable. That's mm-hmm. the thing with South Park. It's easy to watch. It doesn't require a lot of, a lot of uh, brain cells in order to enjoy. But the thing with South Park is that it has the same sense of humor, where, ah, uh, ah, uh, you think we're going this way, we think you're going this way, and then we are going to go a completely different way that makes no sense, but, oh, my God, aren't we funny? And they are funny, but it's not as as unexpected as it was. Yeah, I mean, still, I mean, it's funny as it is, but in terms of zombie shows, SpongeBob was a zombie show for yes. at one point, but it ended, and... I'm not saying good riddance, but 
it good that it ended because it's a legacy now. You can buy the box set, like the complete box set. Yeah. Rom, do you have any um, shows that you have in mind that you want to Well, in? and I just... Well, you've already mentioned all the Western. I can say a lot about anime. Oh. Like Naruto and Bleach. They're also zombie shows because they're oh, just basically God. doing the episodes for milking. Well, um, yes. I have to disagree at one point with Naruto and oh, the Bleach. Naruto. It's never going to be Hokage, for goodness sake. Let no, no, it I mean, drop. Okay, here's, here's the thing, here's the thing. Uh, with those kind of stories or with those kind of anime, they're based on the comic book or the manga, as they call it, and the story has not ended yet. So uh, when they do the cartoon or do the anime, at one point they have to fill in filler episodes. And when the filler episodes are done, they catch up to the comics. And when the comics still haven't done yet, they have to insert more filler episodes just to give the comics some time to catch up. So it's a really confusing. You want to talk about another? You want to talk about another zombie anime, Pokemon? Oh, oh okay, that I agree with. Uh, that I yeah. completely agree. Like, with. okay, you know what? Pokemon is funny. Pokemon is enjoyable, Mm-mm-mm. and Pokemon is endless. Do you want to talk about never-ending story? No, screw that. Michael Ende, no. That's not a word. That Pokemon is the real never-ending story. God damn it, that TV show. Oh my <laughs> god. It's not that bad. I mean, in terms of uh, entertaining anime, it is entertaining and it, it is and it gets the job done. But you want to see your hero mature and evolve or at least have some there kind are... of evolution to his character. But no, not there Ash. are a number of times. That, yeah, there are a number of times that you can see Ash being making an ass of himself before you get tired of it, and you get tired of it fast. For Ash, I don't really mind. The the one that really grinds my gears is the Team Rocket. Like, you're how many seasons in now, and you still fail? And why do you keep doing this? Like, could you please stop? I actually like Team Rocket, but that's because I like how they never give up. I love. I like how they are like. Uh, annoying, insistent, and never stopping. But I like that. But uh, I can totally see why that gets annoying and how that gets annoying so quick. You know what would be much better for them to just quit Team Rocket, hook up, and get a family, and get a real job. Like do that. Yeah, but dude, that's not fun. Uh, I should know. I had a job <laughs> and no, a girlfriend. I, I, I've read. Ah, no, shoot, <laughs> shut up. That's not fun when it comes to anime, not with, when it comes to real life. Uh, I've read one comic about the Pokemon, and this was all in the red, blue, whatever cartridge was it, the original one. And red Jesse and, and James completely stopped flow- following Ash, hooked up. Uh, Jesse was pregnant with the babies, and they're just living their life. Normal. Boring! I- but it was going to end. The see, I I like that. I, to me, what would do better is if each Pokemon generation ends there, and when a new series comes out, it starts with a new hero. Like in the game, you start out with a new hero. Well, I don't know. I mean, think about that. The way that uh, wait a minute, are we talking about Pokemon now? We should keep talking about the the shows becoming a. Uh... Yeah, becoming zombies. zombies. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, yeah that's yeah, what yeah. I feel about this. But we, we should move on. Yeah, in that. But what will you do when when you when the, the when My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is over? What will you do when it's when it's done for? Like what what's gonna happen with your life? I already gave my answer. What about you guys? Really? When, when did you give it, Jing? Positively sure. At the beginning. Well, I said I, I said I said I will move oh, on yeah. and I will still be here. I am not going mm-hmm. anywhere. I don't want to leave this fandom. I love it too much to leave. Yeah, I mean, um, Ron, why didn't you go first? I have absolutely no idea. Man, it, it, it brings me back to school. Just when you're about to end, you have no idea what you're going to do with your life. Mm-hmm. Same thing here. Thanks to the fandom, I'm here doing the things I want to do, making progress, making bacon, so to say. And I'm having a hard time picturing what it would be the aftermath. Mm. I, I don't know. For for me, I I know nothing lasts forever except those zombie movies or zombie shows. But honestly speaking, um, this show has affected my life in more ways than one. And this is going to be personal. This is going to get personal. So um, during the beginning of 2010, I had a really bad breakup with you know my girl, and it was really really bad. And to come 
things down, I went to play card games um, like Card Fight Vanguard at the time and hung out with friends. But something was missing. Something was not fulfilled. And searching around the internet, I saw ponies. At first, I was like, what the hey is this show all about? And okay, being the cartoon snob that I am or anime snob that I am, I thought, okay, let me just give this a shot and see if it's worth my time. Watch the first pilot episode on Know Your Meme and kind of enjoyed it. But the first episode was a cliffhanger. So to completely evaluate it, I had to watch the second one. It was not that bad. It was pretty good. Okay, let's watch episode 3. Episode 3 has to suck. Nope. And until season 4, it has not gone bad for me at all. So I think then I noticed that my outlook on life improved. And I've enjoyed the show. I've enjoyed the fandom. Just because of this fandom, I've met a lot of amazing people. And it got me to do the things I dreamt of doing for a long time, which is to do a podcast and to be on iTunes. And because of this fandom, I get to meet great people. I know. <laughs> Sorry, James. Oh, wait. Anyway, um, I've met you. I've met Rom. I've met Sketchy. i meet everyone. And to me, this fandom or this show affected my life really, really hard in a big way. And I got no idea what would happen if the show ends or what would I do when the show ends. Well, that's too bad, dude. You need to think about something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not joking. I'm not joking. You cannot, like, I love, I love My Little Pony. I love this show. It's a great show. It's very well done. It's very well written. It has great characters and all that. But it's not the center of my life. The center of my life is my family. Mm. And improving as an artist, that's my center. That's what I dedicate my life to. That's what I want to get better. That's my goal in the end. I don't, I don't draw in order to create the ultimate My Little Pony fan art. I draw in order to be a fast artist, uh, a good designer, and to provide for my family and for myself. That's my ultimate goal. Like, this is my entertainment. When the TV show ends... Well, the first thing that I'm going to do when the TV show ends is I'm going to give myself a marathon, and I'm going to marathon the entire series <laughs> from beginning to end, see how everything ties up. And, uh, and, 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 and I, I'm not even going to skip the episodes that I consider unwatchable. I'm going to watch all of it. Just to remind me of the, of the good old times. And then I'm going to go, okay, let's uh, do a stream and, uh, or let's work on this or let's see what I have to work on next. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to still be involved in the fandom. But you have to remember, guys, that My Little Pony has renewed for, what, five more seasons? Oh, possibly, possibly. And not only, uh, like, of those seasons, we know that a couple are going to be counted high. Oh, and they're going God. to be a, a new spin-off series based on Equestria Girls, and the others are going to be likely My Little Pony uh, regular series, the one that we all know and love. Mm. So it is, without a doubt, that we're going to have enough pony to last for a, for a lifetime. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good to know. And ah, well, Rom, what about you? Well, I'm pretty much going to do the same thing. I found my call in life thanks to My Little Pony. I met an awesome people who still hang out with. I met, did collabs on my YouTube channel, doing collabs right now on this podcast. Happy fun times, learning every now and then, from learning something every now and then from someone. I see this as an educational kind of spiritual journey thing. <laughs> and just because this is going to end doesn't mean like my journey is going to end. I mean, there's going to be other things to do around. I mean, the world, the galaxy, the universe expands and always new things are created and discovered or remade you know there's world life is dynamic it always moves and changes for the better or the worst it all depends on the person hmm, that, that'd be true that'd be true and well whatever it is um i've ha- i'm privileged to know you guys that's the thing it's been an honor yeah you guys have been amazing and well i i don't know i'm just thankful i'm just really thankful we have a bunch of Word? In this show, if you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna cry now. <laughs> Don't cry yet. It's we still need season five. I know. Then we can cry. <laughs> but it's just so happy, happy thought thoughts time. <laughs> uh, but seriously, yeah. uh, every TV show ends. Look, mm-hmm. there is no more Star Trek: The Next Generation. Mm-hmm. There is no more original Star Trek. 
There is like Bodger and Deep Space Nine. Those are over already, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There is still Star Star Trek conventions. Mm, yeah, that's true, that's true. And guys, there are still Star Trek conventions after. Uh, there are Star Trek conventions after the terrible, terrible second J.J. Abrahams movie, <laughs> and after the, uh, the 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 terrible Star Trek Five and. You have no, or after the Star Trek Insurrection, there are still Transformers conventions. Mm-hmm. After they cancelled Transformers Prime, and after Michael Bay did not one, not two, not three, but but four movies, there is still a Transformers fandom. Mm-hmm. Why would our fandom be different? Why would our fandom be different from these other fandoms that have survived, thrived? And continued after years. Oh, that's true, like that's the true. My Little Pony fandom exists beyond the Bronies. We arrived late at the game. There was already a My Little Pony fandom. It wasn't big, uh, mind you. It was not that huge. But Generation One had a fan base. Generation Two had a fan base. Had had, had a fan base. Generation Three has a fan base that it's still going. Yeah, what what Simon is saying on the stream, Doctor Who is still there, though it's, yeah, is, I mean, you guys, we, I think we are worrying for no good reason. Oh, true. I mean, it's like the summer drought had arrived, and the same way that some brownie analysts are trying to analyze the bottles of Hanes tomato salsa past <laughs> in a, a pasta, uh, with My Little Pony characters in them, mm-hmm. we are trying to analyze what's going to happen when the show is over. Oh, yeah. It's like, we we are grasping at straws here. Mm, true. I mean, it could be that I'm a rom- romantics, a romant- romantic person. Or what, what's the word I'm looking for? But you know... You are you 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 like to romanticize yeah, the events. Yeah, but still, that, that's just me because it means a lot to me. That's, that's the thing. It means a lot. Oh, but, well, I mean... Um, if no one else has to more input on this, we could end the show. Are you serious? Is this the end? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> no guess this week's folk. Oh folks. god, this is no the end. Well, the end for this episode, by the way. My god, Norman. What the hell happened that there is no guess this, this, this week? Your stream. Really? Oh, it's for work. Yep. Oh wait, right. That's right. I forgot. Is that why it's we not. don't have any guests? Kind of. That's not a word. Norman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wish. You wish. <laughs> but anywho, ne- next week, I promise you guys a really awesome guest. I wish I could. Oh, who's going to be? Um, Cross my fingers. Hope really hard. I'm going to try and get my little karaoke. Ooh, cool. A little info on who that is. Well, I'm not 100% sure who they are individually but they're the crew that did the, the my little karaoke game my little pony karaoke where you can sing songs from the show on the pc like a karaoke machine yay oh i've seen that but i haven't downloaded it yet you should you should that and i don't have a microphone <laughs> what are you doing right now i mean a professional microphone i can't sing with this thing you don't need one you can uh, you can actually sing with this one yeah you, but you it's one not the same you just sing. Oh, shut up. It's just sort of funsies. You don't really need you to go whiny, You whiny little... That's not a word. I know. Uh, so... I just want everything to be perfect. Yep, so crossing well, my fingers. Yeah, well, really you know that the world is not perfect, so screw you. True. True. <laughs> so crossing the world my does finger. not, but I can make it. Oh, boy. <laughs> Anywho, crossing my fingers really hard and hope I can get them. Anyway, with discussion time out of the way and all seppy time gone, shout outs and my first shout out goes to you, James. Thank you for hosting me on your stream and well, just being an awesome guy. That's not a word. That's hi. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> and Rom, thank you for reading the news and derping all the way. My pleasure. I couldn't believe you fall for that, man. It's the oldest trick in the newscaster booth. Oh, trick. <laughs> Bo- I know, right? You're so good. <laughs> Oh, sometimes I've been too good for my own good. Uh, hey, who? What about you, James? Well, my shout goes to you, Norman, uh, for not firing me yet. Um, mm. <laughs> allow me to keep on talking in this podcast and annoying every single person that has been following you from the very beginning. Oh, my. Uh, that I'm pretty sure they're wondering, why do you keep behaving him? Why don't you just fire his ass? Get rid of him. He's a, nu- he's a nuisance. He makes the show worse. Ah, unsur- unsubscribe. This show is not fun anymore. Ah, oh, dear me. Anyway, I believe with uh, you on the show, man. It's gone better. 
Yeah, no, 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 shut up. That is not true. It's just that the quality has gone down, down, down ever since I joined, like a regular. Oh, my God. I should have never come back. Um, uh, the other shout goes to Ramu for being such a boring guy who puts me to sleep and helps me go to bed early to early every day. Yeah, it's, what a guy. No, really, I like you, Ramu. You know that I'm just passing your balls, right? Of course, of course. Of course, of course, of course. But, but I'm not... But I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not lying. Uh, this is the entire truth, and I am never sarcastic because I always speak seriously. Mm. Uh, and the final <laughs> shout out goes to the people on my stream because they're wonderful people, and I cannot. I cannot do what I do without them. Oh, so yeah. thank you guys for being there. Oh, one more shout out to you guys, stream people. Hey, love you guys. You're awesome. And Rom, what about you? Shout out to you guys. Thank you for having me in the show, inviting me, and letting me be the newscaster. <laughs> I make my home country proud. I need someone to read the news because I got lazy. <laughs> you don't have a home. You don't have a home country. You're an immigrant. Oh god! I haven't moved to anywhere. I'm still here <laughs> in my home country. I would be an immigrant if I stayed in England, which I didn't. Whew. Well, they. So yeah, the shout people. out to the guys in the stream. Thank you all for being to here, and shout out to my mom. Hi, mom. Wait, your mom listens to this. Yeah, I told my entire family about the show. Oh, God. But I'm a newscaster. Oh, God. That's not a word. Yeah, and all those naysayers, like, remember that time when you teased me you'll never be a newscaster? Look at the show. Suck it! <laughs> I can actually rub this in their faces. <laughs> You're stuck in a job doing 9 to 5, wasting your lives, while I'm out here kicking butt in your faces. Yeah, but they, you know what? They get paid and you don't, so I don't know who's getting <laughs> I the get worst. I get paid? Life. In yeah, potatoes. you get pay- you get paid, Norman. What the hell? In you potatoes. pay him, and I don't I don't get any money. You do get money, Jane. <laughs> Am I gonna? I'm going to kill you. Oh, That's God. it. Yeah, no. You know what? Last episode of the show, I'm gonna go there <laughs> with a shotgun. You're gonna know the term of blasting into someone. That's not a word. <laughs> I'm going to kill you. Oh my God. Well. <laughs> Well, we'll see you guys after bug and see if I survive or not. <laughs> oh, boys. Anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, and if you want to offer me help in terms of bodyguard or whatnot, you can contact the show at <laughs> dmbsshow@gmail.com. And if you would like to email personally for help, well, uh, links will be provided in show notes. You can also reach us on Twitter. Uh, Sweetiebot is at the MBS show. She will tweet about stuff and um, be happy that she won't be editing the show once I'm gone. And you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. Please do help. I need protection. <laughs> and James, what about you? I'm not talking. I'm not saying a single thing until I start getting money. <laughs> but how, hey, so. how do people, <laughs> how would people know where to give you money if they don't know where to find you, man? Ah, you got me there. <laughs> 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 Uh, you can find me on James Cork on Twitter. You can check my DeviantArt on jamescork.deviantart.com. And you can find my Ask uh, Pony blog on askmovieslate.tumblr.com. Awesome, awesome. And Rom? You can find me on Twitter on romwallz 69 You can find me on my Tumblr account on romwallz 69tumblrcom And, yeah, that's pretty much where you can find me. Yay. You keep saying Tumblr is pissing me off. <laughs> How am I supposed to pronounce it's it? Tumblr! Tumblr! Tumblr, just nibbling ass. God damn it. <laughs> My apologies. It's just one of those episodes, ain't it? Tumblr, 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 Tumblr. Anywho, Tumblr and also okay. please subscribe. Fingers, 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 fingers. <laughs> uh, and also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You could also catch us on PonyvilleLife.com. Links will be provided in the show notes. So I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been very... Betray- I have been betrayed because I just realized that people are getting paid in here and I don't. Oh my god. I've, I've been living a lie all of these years. Norman, what is wrong with you? I thought you, li- I thought you were honest with me, but no, you have to be a liar. A filthy liar. Hey, James, rum is being paid in potatoes. Yes. Uh, that, you know what? That's even worse because that means they don't have to buy food. <laughs> <laughs> I want potatoes as well. It's almost expired potatoes. But whatever, man. If you want expired potatoes, I'm going to go to Romul Lands and I'm going to get all the potatoes. I don't know where you live, but I'm going to take all your potatoes. Go for it. We don't mind. I call it Romul Lands. <laughs> and I have been. 
Shut up. <laughs> and I have been Romuald. And we'll see you next week with less potato or more potato, depending on who you are and where you're from. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. I live my life this way. Looking forward to each day. Hope that I'll make the others see. But no matter how hard I try, they will look into my eyes and say it won't amount to anything. But their words mean nothing to me. I'll be the best I can be. I'll travel far and wide to find out who I am inside Who I am inside I'm moving on from here And I swear I will conquer all my fears Just wait and see what I have in store You'll soon find out that I am blank no more. Da 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 so listen up when I tell you now I know I'll find a way somehow I'll carry on without their sympathy But their words mean nothing to me I'll be the best I can be I'll travel far and wide to find out who I am inside who I am inside I'm moving on from here and I swear I will conquer all my fears Just wait and see what I have in store You'll soon find out That I am blank no more da 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 They won't get to me They can't put me down Even if they try I'll leave them behind No need to hide No more running away from all these doubts and fears of mine I'm moving on from here And I swear I will conquer all my fears Just wait and see what I have in store You'll soon find out That I am blank no Anywho, next one, Rome. Exclusive BotCon Transformers comic cover featuring Shock, <clears throat> Soundwave, and Vinyl Scratch, and Rom is a dummy. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, you are Ron Burgundy, my friend. You are Ron Burgundy. Ha. Ha. Sorry, just had to do it. <laughs> Rom, Rom, are you hurt? For that. Are you, are you I can't believe hurt? I fell for that oldest. That's yeah, the oldest yeah. joke in the book. <laughs> can't believe I fell for it. <clears throat>